introduction, I think most of us have met um, Brittany Levison before, who is the editor for Spice News and also has um, a list which she'll briefly talk about in her call. Um, but as part of our ongoing series, obviously the first four weeks of our recovery series was how to deal with COVID in our, in our workplaces for ourselves personally and also with our remote team working. Um, and we've now moved into stage two, which is all about arming you guys with um, so those, those courses and that information on how to best put your businesses forward when we go back, open the doors basically. Um, so last week, obviously, with the video productions and then this week um, with how learning on how to deal with the media. So we thank you, Britt, for your time. No worries. We're very much looking forward to your presentation. So I'll hand it over to you. All right. Welcome. <laughs> Fairy oh, clap, virtual fairy clap for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see some familiar faces and some I haven't met before, but thanks everyone for joining. Um, so I guess today I wanted to just chat to you a bit about, um, I guess, the best ways that you can interact with media, um, in particular Spice, but whichever media you're looking to interact with. Um, a few tips on how to uh, write press releases, um, some do's and don'ts, things you shouldn't be afraid of <laughs> in terms of working with us. Um, so a bit of background um, on me and on Spice and where we're at at the moment. Um, so I studied journalism at QUT up in Brisbane. Um, been in Sydney now working for about three and a half years um, on different B2B publications, um, mostly in the travel and events industries. Um, and then so Spice, um, obviously, I mean, most of you would know, but business events publication B2B, we've got a print magazine and um, a twice weekly newsletter. And so... We do a lot of um, online news as well as print, which is which is great. Um, and I guess at the moment we're we're trying to be business as usual as as much as possible. Um, we're still sending out our twice weekly newsletter. The only thing that's really changed is that we're going all digital for the upcoming um, winter edition of of, um, of Spice magazine. Um, so that's a bit different for us, but we're we're just trying to reach as many of as many people as we can at home rather than at the business addresses at the moment. So. Um, and I guess the, the sort of um, editorial has changed a little bit in the last few months just with COVID. Um, we're looking to highlight as much of those positive stories as we can um, from destinations and venues and suppliers. So, you know, we're, we're looking at um, different case studies and opinion pieces as well as the sort of generic news about hotel refurbs or venue updates and things like that. So. I guess the overall message um, for us is that we want you to keep coming to us with news. Um, if you don't have, you know, a venue refurb or something like that, that's okay. Give, give us a call, give me a call and just tell us what you've been up to. Tell us how the team is working together at the moment. Um, you know, talk about how you're preparing for after COVID. Anything that you might not think it's newsworthy, you know, and, and we could chat and then I'll say, oh, that's actually, you know, quite a good um a good sort of topic to talk about so yeah i think first and foremost just don't be afraid to give me a call um we'll share all contact details with you afterwards um but i think we'll, we'll break it down today into sort of three parts we'll talk about general news and press releases um then we'll talk about exclusive news and how to work with media on securing exclusives and then um, also touch on pre-written content which is sort of your q and a's and um case studies and things like that so um, general news, I guess when you're submitting something like um, you, you want to talk about um, a venue update or a team update or something like that, press release is the best way to go. Um, with press releases, um, some of you might know this sort of thing, but it's good to sort of recap it in case you don't. Um, the news angle you want is, it needs to be clearly stated in the, the first paragraph. So the first thing that I'll do if I open up an email with the press release in it, I'll click on it and the first paragraph will be the first thing I read. If I can't quite grasp what it's about, it often just falls to the wayside a little bit and I go, okay, that's too difficult. Next one. So you really want to make sure you hit who, what, when, where, why, how in those first couple of sentences. Um, you want to keep it pretty simple and straight to the point. Um, don't spend too much time making it nice and fluffy with pretty adjectives and things like that because the first thing a journalist does is deletes all of those because it's got to be really simple and straight to the point in news. So that's a, a good time saver, I think, as well, that people don't often think about. Um, you want to limit it to one page. 
um, as much as you can, one to one and a half, um, which is about 300, 400 words usually. Um, what else have I got here? Um, the best, the best um, format would be to just attach it to your email as a Word doc. Um, often people will send it as a PDF and that can actually be a bit tricky when you're looking to copy and paste quotes and things like that into, um, into a news story. So Word doc is best. Um, always include quotes from a spokesperson. Um, sometimes we get ones through that don't have quotes in them. So direct quotes from a hotel GM or um, business owner or something like that. Um, and it just means a bit more following up from me, which is fine. But if you, if you want it to be, you know, written straight away and the best sort of um, chance of getting it up on online is to make sure you include those quotes. Great. Can I add in something there? I don't want to interrupt your presentation. But, no, go for it. Go for um, it. Is it not really, really important to have that person's commun direct communication details on whoever's quoting that's available for comment so that you can just follow them up in a timely manner as well? Absolutely. Yeah, you can. Um, but often those people sometimes don't, don't feel comfortable putting if it's say it's someone high up in the business yeah that's fair enough if they don't want to be um if they don't want their phone number or email in there but as long as there's a direct contact um so a communications or marketing pr contact um someone i can just pick up the phone and say you know can you put me in touch with that person or can you yeah so just just a, um someone a, that will pick up their phone <laughs> absolutely <laughs> yeah <Someone will talk. laughs> cool thank um, you that's sorry right. to interrupt that's okay um interrupt whenever anyone can um, and then the other important thing is images. People often forget to put images in or they sometimes they'll tease me with images and say, we have images. Well, just let me know if you want them. I always want them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's always a good idea to just attach a couple of images, um, low res to the email. And then if you have high res images, which is great, um, just include them in a Dropbox link or, um, some sort of external link. So you don't, um, lose the email if it's too large with images. Um, and then I guess people often don't really know whether to follow up a journalist if they haven't heard back or an editor, if they haven't heard back immediately, um, definitely follow up because it, it's, um, very, it can, it can easily just get lost at an email or a press release, um, or end up down in the bottom of the inbox. Um, so just give it a day or two. Don't, um, probably don't follow up in the same day. That can be a little bit irritating <laughs> because often, Often, um, if people follow up on the same day, I haven't actually seen the email or the press release. So um, give it a, a day or two and um, feel free to call or email. I think most most editors or journalists um, don't mind a call or email. Um, yeah. Can I ask another silly yeah, question? <laughs> um, so, you know, in the I'm showing my age a little bit here, but back in the day when I think Tuesday used to be the news day, it was like sacrilege mm -hmm. if you called the media room <laughs> on a Tuesday because they would freak out and say, how dare you, we're writing news for the week or whatever, the month or whatever. Does it still work like that or has digital changed? Um, I mean, is there an ideal, do we have to leave you alone on a certain day? No, you can no it's not like that anymore. But I think it, it might be different with consumer publications. Um, you know, your big newsrooms might be a bit, a bit iffy like that. But in terms of industry media, we're, I think, overall pretty happy to be contacted anytime. There's, I have um, Tuesday and Thursday deadlines. Um, but, I mean, I don't, mean, I don't mind being contacted on those days either. So. But yeah. if, if you are looking to get something in the Tuesday or Thursday newsletter, um, you'd want to send it to me prior to. So if you send it to me on the Monday morning, there's a good chance I can include it on the Tuesday and then, yeah, further on with the Wednesday and, and Friday. So yeah, awesome. call anytime, email anytime. Thank you. I think I do, but I just, for the benefit of the group, I thought I'd better just double check. I'm always <laughs> amazed and impressed by how quickly you do get things out. Um, so sometimes, you know, for us, I, I know Beck, Beck will send, uh, send a press release out and I'll get a copy. And I'm amazed that we're in so quickly. Uh, yeah, it can happen like that if you get in at the right time, um, at the you know, with everything included, the images and everything. Yeah. I see it; it can go straight away. So that's that's always good. And I think people are often surprised yeah. that it's um, yeah. such a small news team as well. It's literally just me. So <laughs> I think that's the other thing people um, don't know who they're talking to. But um, you can rest assured it's it's me and only me. <laughs> um, the so <non> scary Brit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Have to deal with me. <laughs> Um, so that's pretty much all I had with press releases. Was there anything that anyone had 
There was one little question there I see, Brittany, and that was um, media versus press release. Are they the same or the diff or are they different? Is they're the same. They're the same. Think? Yeah, yeah. So um, media release, press release. Right. Yeah. Is that all questions? Yeah. So yeah, far? Okay. Great. Is there anyone no, else who wants to ask a question and didn't type it in the chat? No. Come on, you lot. Come on. <laughs> Make me proud. You never show Sorry. up in the, <laughs> the best of times. <laughs> We can ask questions at the end as well. That's okay. Right. Um, so another avenue um, that people can go down is exclusive news. So um, I think people, uh, I guess venues or suppliers don't often think about this, but exclusive stories um, can be a really good way to secure a top position in um, a media or a media outlets um, newsletter or a magazine. So if someone comes to me and says, oh, hey, we've got um, this venue refurb happening and we really want you to be the exclusive, we want to give you the exclusive. The first thing I'm going to think in my head is great, I can use the word exclusive. It's a good, draws people in. So pretty much straight away, you can guarantee if it's newsworthy, it'll be at the top of the newsletter somewhere in the first couple of top stories. So it can be a bit of a balance of whether you limit it to one publication or if you, you go out to multiple. So it's just a good thing to think about. Um, or um, I guess, yeah, in exclusive stories, it's best to just call or email first to, to discuss it because often um, it'll be better for me to just um, pick up the phone and interview um, the venue or the person, whoever I'm speaking to, um, to make sure they are really exclusive quotes um, rather than in a press release. So that's always a, um, an avenue you can go down with news as well. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think, for exclusive. Um, yeah, and I mean, we've got a couple of exclusive stories you can have a look at on the, on the website. Um, one recently with the Becker um, chair, Vanessa. So um, it, it doesn't need to be necessarily groundbreaking news, but it can be um, a, opinion pieces as well. Here's Beck with the spice. <laughs> I think if you go... I'll just, um, I'll just do that while you're referring to yeah, it. Just, just the industry enough. news? Is that, is that under I mean, the industry it, it might, yeah, it is actually, yeah. Oh, here we go. Exclusive. Sorry, there we are. That's all right. Um, there we go. Um, and then as well, there's also the option to, you can also submit pre-written content um, with Spice or with other um, news publications. So um, this is often for case studies or um, opinion pieces or Q&As. Um, so you can just get in touch with me. Uh, via call or email and then we often have um, templates that we'll just send you um, and then you can fill them out so it helps um, helps guide what you're actually writing so um, yeah I mean at the end of the day it, it will come down to the editor's discretion um, as to how they edit it but mostly these come to me um, fully written and then um, they can go straight up online so that's a good way as well to showcase um, and we are still showcasing case studies and, and events that have been that have happened in the past um, so yeah, if you had a, say you're a venue operator and you had, um, you know, a great corporate event a few months ago or last year, we can showcase that with some great imagery and showcase how the venue was used. Um, so get in touch if you want to talk about that and we can just give you a template and fill it out and it's nice and simple. Um, the, probably the best thing to remember is with that is that we don't really want it to be too sales focused, um, as that then turns into advertorial, which is paid, uh, paid content. Um, so yeah, you just want to avoid any sales talk, but we can always talk that through with you um, if you're unsure how to how to do that. But um, that's probably about it for pre-written content as well. If there was any questions, just one there, Brittany, um, which was about um, particular story angles that you might be chasing at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so I, so at the moment we, as well as just general news, um, which is all about sort of, um, yeah, so venues, it can be about supplier news, um, industry news, all that sort of thing. We're also really trying to put a positive spin on COVID-19. So um, we're really looking to showcase, I guess, um, any of the positive, say, community things that um, businesses are doing at the moment. Um, anything, if you're preparing a team for post-COVID, that's also a great angle that we're looking at at the moment, is how are these businesses you know, not only adapting now, but really preparing for what's ahead and um, training teams and 
um, preparing venues and things like that. Um, where else are we, what else are we looking for at the moment? I'm just trying to think. Um, opinion pieces are really good as well. So they often come in fully written. Um, you can chat to me like beforehand to work on an angle, um, but this could be, um, you know, something about the future of events or it could be something on the um, upcoming trends in events. Um, anything really that someone has a good opinion on. We, we really actually enjoy hearing that and they go really well with our readers, um, opinion pieces, because it's, you know, it's interesting to hear someone else's take on, on a topic. So um, definitely get in touch if you have someone that you want to put forward um, that can share a bit of a um, industry insight or opinion. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of our angles at the moment. Um, we're still, we are really trying to put a focus on regional as well. Um, so, we are in in the next couple of magazines. We'll be really showcasing um, venues within uh, destinations within Australia and in particular regional areas. So, um, yeah, really really looking forward to hearing more from um, different regions in Australia and, and New South Wales um, to hear what's going on and, and promote you guys. So, yeah, that's a, pretty much our angles at the moment is where we're at. Is there another question there? Um, I was just uh, wondering about um, yeah, controversial, so controversial yeah. stories. Love controversial stories. Like what? <laughs> like what? What do you know that we all don't know? No, no. I'd, I, I'm just curious to, um, if you have some uh, stories about um, exclusives that were controversial or um, especially that space. It's an it's a, no, I guess a, a different platform, I suppose. But yeah, I'm just curious. Um, I'm trying to think of where controversial yeah, comes from, but I mean, definitely had sort of breaking news and things in the past that, um, you know, yeah. is controversial in that regard. People often email and say no, they don't agree or, or they don't really like what we're <laughs> saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's hard. <laughs> um, but yeah. I don't really think we've got too much in the way of controversial no, news. That's okay. That's okay. No, I was just curious. Yeah, we need to start something. We need to yeah, have some, you know, like <laughs> Julia Roberts has turned up in the tweed or something yes, and we need yes. to we need to have a double like a person who looks like her walking yeah. down the street and then just sort of leak it. I'd go for that. That's the top story, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, can you help me with that? <laughs> Um, you've got a background, have you? Yeah, there's a bit of noise going it's on in the background, I'm not sure. someone else, and we're all on mute. Yeah, it's not me, there's no, no sound out here. Yes. It's probably so, me, probably. can you hear that? Yeah, that's my so, colleague in the co-working space. I'll mute myself, sure. Heath, over to you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> that's um, but yeah, did you have any more questions or like go on to? Um, and uh, just the kind of stories you might, have, uh, you might actually steer away from from writing, um, oh, the point. kinds of clashes. Um, there's yeah, there's not too much that really clashes as long as it's it's relevant um, to our audience, which is event managers, PCOs, anyone that plans events. So um, just just have a think about the news that you have, and just think if I'm an event planner, do I is it useful for me to know this information um, and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, too much of a leisure angle doesn't quite work for our audience. Um, but always, if, you, if you're unsure, just float it by us and we can help you out. Um, one that we get a lot of that we don't generally publish is um, appointments. So, um, you know, a new salesperson or a new, um, you know, that sort of thing we, we tend to um, move away from just because there's, there's so many announcements like that. So we don't want to, to people to miss out if we only publish one or two. So we just kind of we stick to um, major announcements of, you know, CEOs or... Um, Sure. Yeah, chair people, things like that. So, yeah, that's about all we steer away from that I can think of. Right. Um, a couple of do's and don'ts of um, oh, yes. media that might help everyone. <laughs> um, so do pick up the phone um, and call. Don't be afraid to just, you know, float ideas with me. Um, we can chat about what features I've got coming up um, that might be useful for you to um, put in your diary or, or brainstorm. And we can always share... Um, our editorial calendar with you as well. Um, do make sure the news is relevant. So, yep, just think again about who the readers are, if they really want to know about this. Most of the time, you know, it is useful. So, um, 
You just froze and up there a little Brittany. bit, Brittany. I might get you to run that one again, if you wouldn't mind. That's all right. Which one, the, the second one, the relevant what? news? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's saying my connection is unstable. Let me know if it drops out again and I can have a play around. Um, but yeah, that one was pretty much just to make sure it's relevant and have a think about who the audience is. Um, and then, yeah, just to jump, double and triple check who you're sending the email to. This is a, a bit of a funny one, but I often get um, emails to uh, Dear Brad, who you might know as my, as my competitor. <laughs> so just a, a, a good thing is to double, triple check that. Just make sure it's um, going to the right person, <laughs> which it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't, it doesn't start you off on a great foot. <laughs> um, a couple of don'ts. Um, so... Don't ask to see the, the article if it's uh, before it's published. That's um, most of the time we can't really give you that, you know, um, first look before it goes ahead. If, if we've worked on, um, if you've sent through a press release, that's the information I'll use. Or if we've um, interviewed, it pretty much goes ahead as, as is. Um, if you want to check over an article or a news piece before it goes ahead, um, you really do have to secure that with paid advertorial. So, That is another option you can go if you have a bit of a sales angle that you want to talk about, um, but you want to look more like editorial. So you can do that as well. Um, Sorry, Brittany, we lost again, you. Don't at, follow up. We lost you at paid advertising. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I might see if I can. I'll see how, if it keeps dropping out. Um, but if it's just a couple of times, well, it should be okay. You just look like you're having your own little, um, you know, your own little dance party. Party over here. It was like it was like watching soccer before the goal. <laughs> um, so I don't know where it was up to, but um, uh, you, you were talking about um, asking for copy um, when uh, it's really a, what you can only do once you've got paid advertising. Correct. Yeah. So we do work with clients on um, paid advertorial, and it is a really good option if you if you've got um, a bit of a sales focus or a call to action, but you want to weave it into editorial um, in a, a non-traditional sales way. So um, that's a great option if you want to work directly with me on creating some content that directly promotes your venue or your brand. Um, and that way you can have the last view of it before it goes up online and, and ticking across anything you want to include. So that's a, that's a good option as well. Sorry, I've got a fly in the room. <laughs> Um, again, don't follow up on the same day unless it's incredible breaking news that I can't miss, but I probably would have seen it, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then another one people often do is um, they use embargoes on their press releases. Um, so it's not really necessary to use an embargo, really. Um, so that's one to keep in mind, unless you're only going out to one or two um, news platforms, then you can give them a heads up with an embargo and just give them the press release um, in advance and say, don't publish until this date. But usually there's no real need within industry news to do that. Um, but that's pretty much all my do's and don'ts. And that was, um, yeah, pretty much all I had to cover really. Is there any other questions or things I've missed back? Un unmute yourselves, people. Feel free to talk, even you Beck. We'll see that's how your, I'm your looking, neighbor's going. I, I should be looking at the chat, shouldn't I? Uh, um, Nick's still yeah, no, talking, I'm, so I'll just be really quick. I'm just wondering if there's any, um, yeah, is there any benefit in sending like a slightly revised I'll version um, to each of the mice people that you might be speaking to, the industry publications? I know that we deal with about five of you guys, yeah. but is it worth doing a slightly different oh. angle to Spice yeah. and a slightly yeah. different angle to CIM and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, definitely. If you have um, enough <laughs> angles to talk about and that sort of thing or... Um, a good way we I've had it before is um, we had an exclusive look at um, Hayman Island, the intercontinental at Hayman Island, um, and they flew out a few journalists and we were all given um, just one image to take home because we weren't allowed to take images on the island. Um, so we each had an exclusive image. So that's a, a different way of doing it, but it's it's saying we want this much coverage, but we want each of you to, to have an exclusive that's worth everyone sort of, um, reading your publication for. So definitely if you had enough angles um, to talk about or enough imagery that, that was exclusive, um, definitely. Yeah, we don't see that a lot, but um, it would be a, a good way to go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, most of us are um, from the regions and, and every single one of us has uh, has certainly an exclusive angle on our 
our product. So yeah, broadening that storyline is really, really practical. Mm. Um, I was wondering about, um, about uh, uh, clashes that may have, may have impact you um, when it comes to your competitors writing stories as well. Yep, so um, that's a good one, actually. Often, if um, if I see a press release or a bit of news come through and I've got it um, earmarked to publish, say, tomorrow, and then I see my uh, competitor use it the day before, I generally won't cover it unless it's something, you know, really... <laughs> well, actually, in saying that, no, we, we do. We would just not... It wouldn't be given the same amount of air that it would have previously so if I had that pinpointed as oh that's going to be my lead story and then CIM my old uh, my old employer <laughs> I should say um, you know goes and uses it as a as a lead story I'm gonna not I'm gonna push it down to the bottom or I'm gonna put it halfway or something like that so um, yeah don't be disheartened if you don't see even if it's amazing news if you don't see it you know on everyone's top stories and I think other other publications aren't quite like that I think they're happy to to run with it, but I try and keep our top stories or our couple, because we only have five stories in each newsletter. So I try and keep them um, as uh, unique to us as possible to just not overload our readers. Because our readers, like you said, Beck, have have about five publications that they're that tune in. So yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Um, Britt, I've got another question just about for media meals because I'm sure you get invited to absolutely everywhere. How do you work out where you're going to go and who you're going to... How does that work? Can you talk to that? It's um, a blessing and a curse, I must say, Beck, because I want to go everywhere <laughs> all the time. Um, so, yeah, and that's the hard thing, I think, about being a one-person editorial team is that that means I get to very luckily go on all the familles, um, but it does mean that if there's a clash um, that we that we won't be able to go to everything. Um, in the past, I also have um, sort of got my sales colleagues to go on, on for mills, which is a bit unusual. Um, and it's not everyone's first choice. A destination might say, no, we don't want sales, but they always have a very strict editorial um, route that they're going down. So I, I make them write something and, and they're not there to, sail, to, to sell or to pitch anything. They're there as in an editorial capacity. Um, but, I guess if I'm choosing, it will have to be a relevant destination, which um, most most destinations are. Um, we have to have not covered it already in the last, say, 12 months, um, or there needs to be a new angle or some really big developments that's going to add something different. Um, so I try not to the same destination too many times in a row, um, unless caught on. Plus with mills, I think. Um, it's good to talk with your um, with the editor or journalist that's going if, if you really want to secure and um, and I guess make it clear what editorial you want from it you need to talk about it before they attend the famille so um, because editorial calendars are often um, decided on or allocated pretty early on so um, once when you've invited the journalist and they've said yes and they're coming along just what you're hoping to secure and if it's possible we generally give um print coverage and online coverage so um it's anywhere between one to two one to three pages of have i dropped out again all good oh good yeah, um, still with us still with us good good it just came up and said internet unstable um so yeah usually one to three pages of um editorial is what we generally give out but if you really want to make sure that you get those two or three pages just flag it with the um the journalist beforehand um just so you're all on the same page um and it's always useful as well after the famil to um send through a list of um the contacts and any fact sheets or images as well from um, venues or suppliers that they've interacted with on the famil. Usually I'll get the contacts along the way, but it's it's quite useful to have a list just to refer back to of everyone's contact details. Um, but that's about it from famils. Was there any other questions in terms of famils in general? All good. Should we have a show of hands? Um, uh, uh, how many of us have actually written press releases and sent them through? One, two, three. Okay, a few. Um, well, yeah, that that might be the new the new challenge. I think um, one of the things that I think that you said that that really impressed me was that you're you're 
always open for the story. You're always keen mm. for the messaging. And I think um, people are a bit afraid maybe of, um, of, of just putting the story together and sending it through. Mm. Yeah, and I think the other thing is, it's, it is, um, and I, I really do welcome people calling or emailing just to discuss um, what their ideas are. If, if um, you know, I'd hate for someone to, to spend the time and effort writing a press release or this amazing story and then send it to me and I go, oh, it's, you know, it's not relevant or we can't use it. So it is really beneficial just to chat to the people you're sending it to. Um, yeah, send an email and say, hey, is this relevant? what which angle can I go down what do you need from me so that's always a good thing if you're a bit unsure just yeah just pick up the phone and we'll have a chat <laughs> is there any other questions Beck? you have we covered everything I've just sent a message to Heath for him to ask but whilst whilst Nick isn't talking I'll ask it quickly um, um, I'm just suggesting that you know sometimes we think it's all about just our businesses and things but I'm just putting a call out to everyone to remind everyone that you know you can do Jeanette you can do a media release from obviously from Port Macquarie or we can just focus on food and beverages as, a, as an independent theme or whatever um, and so then it doesn't I, I don't, lots of people, especially small businesses, do get a bit daunted about having to write the press release. So with that additional help from, in this case, Brit, um, we can also, you know, we, Heath and I can help facilitate, you know, support from in a, in a group. So whether that's a group around, you know, hotels and how they're recovering or what is their personal experience about COVID, for example, or I know a couple of people on the call today, we're working on a, a virtual site inspection working group, which actually might be really interesting to share with you on that. Um, so about how that process is taking place, you know, um, so all that kind of thing. So just do, I mean, I know you all have really fantastic collaborative relationships anyway, but sometimes we just forget to go, oh, we're working together anyway, so why don't we tell our news people about, you know, what, what developments are happening in our own little patch. So just a reminder on that. Yeah, yeah. And another um, thing that we're getting a little bit of, and this, it's not necessarily a press release, but you might just want to send through, you know, five businesses in your area that are doing something interesting during COVID, you know, just a couple of paragraphs on each one and just say, hey, these are a couple of things we're doing. Is this of interest to you? Is there something else we can get for you? Or here are the contact details. So um, that's a good way as well to just start the conversation. Then I might go, oh, that's a great, um, you know, top five story. We do a lot of listicle content as well. Um, you know, top five regional areas or, um, you know, five amazing businesses in this area and that sort of thing. So, yeah, we do a bit of that as well. We have 105 amazing businesses, but that's okay. <laughs> so we should probably leave it there if anyone doesn't have any other questions. For Britt, has anyone else got any other questions? That was really valuable. Thank you so much for your time. Sorry about that background noise before. Um,